Hello there, hi, welcome to Butterfly Effect, a podcast all about interviewing people. I'm your host, Tristan Edelman. Before we get to that all about interviewing part, let's just uh, let's chill for a second. Let's do a little rap sesh. Let's uh, talk about you. Things going well? Great. That's enough. Let's talk about me. <laughs> I'm just joking. But yeah, things are going well, I'll say. Uh, last week I mentioned there's a couple things in the pipeline. One of those things ended up not happening, but it probably ended up making my life easier in some regard. Um, and the other I am doing. I can't really talk about it much, but I'm working from home. My schedule's much more open now. I've been dealing with getting that it you know situated with uh, leaving the old job and and getting this one going. But uh, now my schedule's gonna be so much more open. I'm like I can get some projects done. I think. Uh, get cracking on uh, getting more guests in the show because uh, as I'll mention later I have no episodes in the can beyond this one um, because things have been crazy you know life just happens sometimes but you know get some writing done try to do some other freelance stuff I'm feeling good I'm feeling pretty creatively fulfilled uh, and I'm feeling good in my life so that's a plus Part of the reason is that uh, my guest today, Boy Ackerman, was a pleasure to talk to. Look at that segue. Uh, yeah, Boy is a, a comic artist, uh, perhaps most notably for Captain Ultimate, which is uh, part of the reason why I had him on the show. Uh, Captain Ultimate is an all-ages superhero, gold, silver age, fun as hell comic written by... Uh, Joey Esposito and Ben Bailey, the former of which I've I've had on the show. Ben, uh, ben. I'd like to have Ben on the show. Joey was episode two or three years, I, I, I believe. Um, and they are running a Kickstarter right now to get the book to print because the first six issues of the book, uh, which is volume one of the book, uh, were released digitally, and uh, they want to get the book in new hands, get them to the kids in the libraries and the stores and stuff. For, for those kids that don't uh, have access to the digital platforms or even know about them, so uh, they're asking for fifteen thousand, I believe. They're probably a little more than a third of the way there at this point, and uh, you should support them. I, I think you can search Kickstarter for Captain Ultimate. I'll put a link where I can and uh, in the description. And um, yeah, it's a good book. Silly, um, fun. Oh, my phone went off. You probably heard that. I'm not redoing this. But yeah, Boy uh, um, is a great artist. Uh, We talk about his kind of cartoony influences, which is what I like in comic books. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting look into the comics world as well. Like my conversation with Jeff and my conversation with Joey all those months ago. I guess that was like one of the first few episodes. But I, I'm really interested in comics, and I learn more about the industry. And Boy, being uh, in the Netherlands, has a unique uh, angle on, on the comics industry and stuff like that. So uh, you'll hear about all that stuff in, uh, in one short second. So I will see you on the other side. Enjoy the conversation. How are you doing? Doing? Yeah, no, doing great. I'm glad we could figure something out <laughs> with, uh, with Joey and stuff, but uh, yeah, your fault is always a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet I've done um, I've done some interviews with a uh, uh, guy in Sweden, and so that oh yeah, I'm different. That's about the same the time zone as I am. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I've done one with a guy in Australia. So like I, I <laughs> for a while there, I was I was used to like I did that one at, like midnight or something my time, so <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm about but, nine years into your future. Nine, years, right. nine hours into your future. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, how's the um, Captain Ultimate Kickstarter coming along? Yes, yeah, going great actually. Um, we just finished the first week, and uh, that went really, really well. Uh, I'm you guys really... like a third of the way funded, right? Yeah, we're up one third, so that's a, that's a great start. And we kind of you know, we're going into the infamous second week. Uh, and they always say, "Well, in Kickstarter, your first weeks." And your sec- or your last week are the, the best weeks, because ah, okay. then you have your your diehard fans who were were waiting for it or the, are backing you in the first week, and then everybody who's who's waiting or keeps forgetting it will back you in the last. 
So the second and the third week are notoriously slow, and we we kind of notice it in our um, in our backing now that it's uh, the the frequency of people backing it is slowing down a little bit. So we're uh, yeah. we're trying to get that uh, get that up again. But right. no, what I a think, terrifying ride. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's man. I feel like I've aged like <laughs> yeah. I'm aging ten years every every day. So that's have you run have you done any other Kickstarters beyond this one? No, this is my first. Oh, I know okay, um, okay. Joey and Ben both have a few. Yeah, yeah, they have. Yeah. Of belt, yeah, but for yeah. me, it's the first time, so I I don't know how they do it. Yeah, well, I think when they first were doing some of their other ones, uh, it was a little more, um, it was less popular Kickstarter. At least I know yeah. Joey with with footprints and stuff like that. But yeah, especially the first footprints that was that was a while ago. Uh, yeah, so it, I mean, Kickstarter's grown, so that's a good thing. But there's yeah. also a lot more competition, and you hear sure. a lot about people being like disappointed with Kickstarters who who got funded and then never delivered. Um, yeah, or that's so that's not going to be an issue with you guys, right? That's kind of the your your angle on yeah, part of it. Yeah, that's basically yeah, that's part of our pitch. We're all done. It's it's a collection, mm-hmm. so it, it's going to collect the first six issues of um, of Captain Ultimate plus some extras. In print. Yeah, in print, but it's yeah. it's all been. Published digitally at, Cap- at yeah. uh, Monkey Brain Comics, so no, there's no, there's no risk of it not not being completed. Yeah, because as much as digital comics uh, have grown, I'm sure you could reach a, a, a larger audience or at least a different audience with uh, a print book in stores. Yeah, oh, so. no, definitely. One of one of the biggest things for us is getting the book in libraries because yeah. um, we're kind of pitching the book as a, as like a gateway drugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For people to get into comics, I mean, it's really all ages. It's one of the few books that's really kid appropriate. Um, so we're trying to get it into as many kids' hands as, as possible. And I mean, libraries are a really big, big part of that. Yeah, I was reading that you guys were you aiming for libraries. I just talked with uh, Jeff Smith, who created Bone. I don't know if you're familiar mm-hmm. with the comic, but oh yeah, that was it. like a thing with yeah, I, I, it's so good. But uh, he, that was a thing that they were kind of aiming for you know, back in the day when they were just, you know, <laughs> it was him self-publishing and then they got the Scholastic deal and then that was, you know, a yeah. whole new thing. But I just saw kind of a parallel there when, um, just because I just talked to him and I was thinking about that. So that's no, interesting. It's, yeah, exactly. And also in shops, I mean, it's so, I, I can only speak from, from here in the Netherlands, but I, from what I hear, it's it's the same over there in uh, in the States. There's so little all ages material available in, in right. stores. So, I think it's just. I mean, we're of course we're fighting for our own comic right now, right now, but I think in general for for like the the marketplace, it would be a good thing to get more more of these kind of comics funded and into stores and more into the into the eye. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I I read the 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 letter that was in the Kickstarter page and all that stuff, and it's uh, it's a good. Yeah, that was that was heartwarming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and just, we've been getting. I think all there are people looking of, for that. Yeah, definitely. We're getting all kinds of really cool. I mean, as as first as like when we started with the first issue, it's been one great response after the other, and we've we've gotten word from so many parents uh, with things like, "Yeah, this is the first comic book I could get my kid into," and I'm reading it with my with my kids before they go to bed, and it's just that we've gotten some really heartwarming and amazing responses. So that's a big motivation for us to 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 keep doing it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's let's. I think part of it is the uh, the art style, which of course is all all you. I, I think it's very <laughs> colorful and uh, attractive to people of all ages. Yeah, we're I, really I like that kind of a style. The, yeah, we're really trying to go for the all ages uh, look, and uh, my style is pretty pretty cartoony. Uh, so I think that's yeah. a, that's a pretty nice nice fit. And um, yeah, we're throwing just you know trying to keep it light, throwing a lot of jokes uh, in there. Uh, yeah, a lot of Easter silly, eggs. Silly comic, I would say. Yeah, it's it's that's what we're what we're aiming for. Just being yeah. like old school fun. So yeah. the, the sillier, the the better. Um, so we're trying, you know, we're just trying to keep it fun and keep it fun for everyone. So there's a lot of you know, bright colors and fun things going on for the kids. There's a lot of uh, like inside comic book jokes. Right. Uh, yeah. For for the adults. So we're just kind of trying to keep it as fun as, and as accessible as possible. Yeah, I think you guys uh, succeed on that too. Well, we're, but, we're uh, having a blast making it. I mean, I'm always yeah. I, I want to see more. Yeah, I want you guys to do some more. 
Uh, we're, ju- we're just trying to get the fun that we have making it. Yeah, we're just I... trying to get that across to the to the readers. Sure. Yeah. So how do um, how did you come up into comics? How uh, when you were growing up, were you reading a a lot of them? Oh yeah, I totally grew up on on comic books, but it's a little bit different over here in in yeah. uh, Europe because um, comic books aren't really that big or that accessible uh, over here, like American style comic books. Uh, so we have a lot of European you know, stuff, like uh, you probably know Tintin. Sure. And, uh, yeah. I read it. I read tons of Lucky, Lucky Luke when I was a kid. Uh, okay. Asterix and Obelix. Uh, we have Donald Duck is extremely popular over here in the Netherlands. Yeah, like Disney comics and stuff like that. Or? Yeah, yeah. I know IDW is starting be- starting to publish some of that stuff over in the in the states now. But that's been, I mean, the, the, especially in Europe, comics are big, but it's mostly France and Bel uh, France and Belgium. Uh-huh. Um, over in the Netherlands, it's way smaller. I think the only thing that that everybody reads is Donald Duck. I mean, that's like like Archie over over. Uh, that's cool. So I totally grew up on those things, and then when I was a little bit older, I think uh, I think it was my dad came back from a trip and he brought me home a, a Spider Man and a West Coast Avengers book from the mm. uh, from the store there, and they were they weren't even Dutch, I think. Um, but that just, I mean, that blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. I, I, haven't re- I hadn't read superhero books before that, but I was like totally hooked from there on. And, you know, Sp- Spider-Man and Batman, like the, the really big books, no. they've always been, been translated to Dutch in some way or, sure. or, or yeah. form. So from, from that moment on, I just kept nagging my parents for more Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. and that was Spider-Man's my favorite because, superhero. Yeah, I... I I love Spider-Man so much, and that's basically how I started drawing. Just looking at those books and drawing Spider-Man. Yeah, it's interesting that even if it's uh, even if they weren't translated, I mean, obviously the art was something that spoke to you. The, the, yeah, uh, definitely. That, and that I style. mean, I still remember the books I was reading. They they were bringing out these classic stories. So I think my first Spider-Man might actually have been the one where uh, Kingpin. Is introduced and he quits. Oh wow! Uh, so that's a that's a good one to start with. <laughs> yeah. So they were like reprinting. Yeah, they had classic two runs. Stuff. Yeah, they were they were doing like the the current run and they were mm-hmm. doing classic. Um, so th- that's cool. I read both of those. It was a bit confusing for a kid. Like <laughs> the timeline was going left and right, but uh, that's always. And I think the current run was then by Eric Larson, uh-huh. and his art style just. I mean, as a 90s kid, that, that completely blew me away. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, uh, did, was, uh, is it AD? Is that a British thing? Yeah, that's more British, so? yeah. Yeah, we don't was have that up here. Oh, it wasn't around at all? Because that's no, the no. only inkling I've ever had of, of what was kind of bigger, you know, in, in Europe, or at least I guess yeah, just... And that's, and that's but, like comic book style more, right? So right. it's... America and England are are completely different markets uh, as far as comic books go as as Europe. Because mm-hmm. we're used to the big European style like Tintin, the the big albums, and then right you now having having like one album every year. Um, that's actually being very productive. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's a, that's a big difference with the American uh, market where you have to pump out a, an issue every month. Right. Yeah. I I I don't know. I guess there's pros and cons to it. Uh, I'm not super entrenched in the industry to know uh, like what how that stuff works, but I know personally I don't necessarily keep up with every you know issue. I usually get the trades or, or something, but yeah. So, but, uh, but no, so, there's a lot of great material over here. I mean, especially French comics are some. Be- there's some beautiful yeah. work in there. Yeah, I, I had a friend of mine who was French, and he would introduce me to all these like I, I couldn't read them, but crazy uh, <laughs> cool French comics, but. Yeah, as, as we've established, you don't always need to read it. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah, that's kind of, you know, comics, uh, the the art is, you know, the other half of it, obviously. Yeah, that's the great thing about comics, yeah. You can translate that story that way. <laughs> so, but so that, you that just, really got me, those books really got me hooked when I was a kid, and I just always, always drew and never never stopped drawing. Right, that's what I was going to say. So Spider-Man was, you, you were drawing Spider-Man and stuff like that, and then kind of evolved into something more? Yeah, and it just, it, it's always been, uh, I mean, for years it's just been a hobby, something I do next to, um, I mean, my old teachers in school can, can attest to my, my notebooks always being full of, <laughs> <laughs> full of drawings, too, yeah. much 
much to their uh, uh, chagrin or frustration. But I've I've always done it, and then at some point I I think I walked into a, a local comic book store over here, and um, mm-hmm. I've been I've been posting like fan art on on the internet for uh, for a while then, and uh, they were just starting a small like small press publishing house from from their store. Wow. Uh, and they knew me. They saw some stuff from of mine online, and they just asked me, "Well, we're we're working on some new stuff. Would you would you like to draw for us?" And that's that was basically the first time I thought of, "Oh wow, I could I could actually do this and uh, and make it work." Yeah. So what, what was that first? What was that first uh, gig? What were you? What were the? It was. Uh, uh, it was uh, the fun thing is it's it's kind of it's the most similar to Captain Ultimate of all my really? work. It's uh, Captain Rofa. It even sounds like, <laughs> and it was a very local. It was kind of like a Captain Marvel type type book, um, uh-huh. and it was very very uh, much local. I, I live in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, um, uh-huh. and it's that's one of the biggest cities uh, over here, and it was all like inside jokes of of the city. So we had uh-huh. a we had a gorilla. A famous gorilla escape from uh, from our zoo <laughs> <laughs> that happened years ago, and that was the first storyline was the, that the superhero Captain Rafa had to had to capture the gorilla and bring him back to the zoo, and like anything that happened in the city, we we kind of incorporated into the comic books. So that was, I mean, locally here, it was a really really big small press success. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's a fun uh, idea, though, just kind of parodying the city you're in. You know? Yeah, it was really cool, and it actually opened up uh, like a, a, a big Tarmer demographic because, I mean, comic books is is a really niche thing, um, sure. especially here in the Netherlands. Yeah. But having having like the the city prominently displayed and in the in the title and everything, just, I mean, everybody, even people who didn't read comics, were picking up the book just because they they were big fans of the city. Yeah, they live in the city. They were, they were interested in how your uh, your take on it, what you're doing yeah, with it. So, so we didn't. I mean, it wasn't on. Plan, but that actually was a smart business <laughs> business decision, right? Yeah. yeah, which I've replicated a few times since. So I have a lot of Rotterdam Rotterdam based material. That's cool, though. That's uh, obviously uh, you know within comics in general, that is not a uh, a place or a culture that's necessarily uh, represented. So it's just it's cool that you're creating more stuff around that. Yeah, I always find it a bit weird that American comics always seem to take place in in New York. Yeah, <laughs> that's the joke. I mean, it's like. How do they? How are all these superheroes just in New York? Just like this one, because <laughs> it's such a small geographic area. Yeah, how are Manhattan they not flying is like into each other? Wide. Yeah. What's that? How are they not flying into each other every? Yeah, I know exactly. Day. They're just bumping into each other on the streets and stuff like that. And how is there yeah. still crime? Yeah, exactly. I, I, that is part of the, you, you know, suspension of disbelief. There, I guess you just gotta be like, oh, okay. But then you mentioned like West Coast Avengers. They tried to like make it kind of uh, more realistic, I guess, by like, spreading them out a little bit. But then even that idea kind of petered out. But yeah, I do like. I think there's like a kind of a lack of geographic representation in comics. Yeah, but. and I noticed. I mean, for I can understand for like a big nation of international book, everybody in the world knows New York. So that's I understand yeah. that. And Marvel was based for, in New York and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I, especially for like indie comics. I, I mean, yeah. my own experience is, you know, doing something really central to one location uh, at least gives you a lot of a lot of sympathy uh, over there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you were doing this this comic. Was that would you consider that the first uh, leaping off point into into new things? Yeah, that was definitely I, my first. That was my first book, and uh, like okay. I said, it was it was a bigger success than any of us any of any of us uh, imagined when we started it. And um, I did a few other things for them, um, and then I just started. I mean, I, I also kept posting things on the internet. And uh, a buddy of mine, um, Jeremy Thomas, um, asked me to pitch on an anthology book uh, that was happening uh, over in the states, which was uh, Rise. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, it was started by Joey Joey Esposito, who's now my yeah. uh, one of my co-creators on the Captain yeah. Ultimate. It was the uh, was it the bully anti-bullying? Yeah, book? the anti-bullying book. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he just signed us up, <laughs> and then told me, "Hey, dude, I signed us up." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and we got through. I mean, he wrote a really cool story. Um, I, I uh, drew it pretty quickly, and it was um, it was the first thing I sent to America. 
uh, and it it kind of got that started. I mean, it, it took a while for that book to come out. So in the meantime, I I did like three or four other anthology pitches, and everything just went through. I did some short stories for um, uh, Grey Haven Comics, which is a small small American publisher, mm-hmm. and just started started building from there. I mean, the great thing about anthologies is that you're you're featured in work alongside other creators. Uh, yeah. And we're all reading those books, so that's it's also a great network networking thing, right? Um, definitely. And that's that's basically how how the Captain Ultimate book. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds sounds like you met uh, how you met Joey and and Ben. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I knew them a little bit um, just from from online and uh, from yeah. the podcasts they were they were doing. But no, that was definitely the one that I mean they were looking in the book and said, "Oh, this this looks like a style." I mean, the the cartoony style, like we like we said. They would really fit this this all ages pitch that they had, and um, yeah. they contacted me. We did some designs. Uh, I think we did the first four or five pages, and um, yeah, they and they started shopping it around, and it, everything uh, everything moved pretty quickly from there. Yeah. Well, speaking of that cartoony style, what do you um, what do you attribute that to? What what were uh, some of the influences, like specific artists, or just you know? Cartoons yeah, it's or a, other comics that kind of channeled it. I had a pretty pretty eclectic mix of styles growing up over here because yeah. I was I was reading the European stuff and the American stuff. Yeah. So usually when Europeans are reviewing my books, they uh, they call it an American style, and when Americans are reviewing it, they call it a European style. Huh. Uh, I've even been been selected for some manga awards. So there's, there's, <laughs> there's okay a, a mix of things going on. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I've been influenced by a lot. I mean, I I grew up uh, in the '90s, so definitely all those the Batman and the X-Men cartoons. I I devoured those. Um, and if you're looking at, at at artists, I really admire now. I mean, Eric Larson, of course. Like I said, mm-hmm. uh, I grew I grew up on that, and yeah. I really love like the more cartoony guys like Scotty Young or Sean Galloway, or even the guys like Ryan Utley or Tred Moore, who who are great at combining. Like a cartoony style, but with a really mature sure. content. Yeah, yeah, right on. Um, yeah, it's great. I just love it. I, for some reason, that always appealed to me more than than like the photorealistic style. Same, yeah. I'm always like, well, yeah. If you're if you're doing a comic book and you're making it so realistic, you might as well just take a camera and make a, a TV yeah. show or something. Yeah. I mean, comics lend themselves to so many crazy things, and I think the cartoony style really lends itself to, to stretch those those borders. So that's always yeah. appealed to me, and I think you, you can see that in my style. I mean, I've, I've tried to draw more realistic sometimes, but for some reason it always... <laughs> I'll be able to maintain it for one or two panels, and then I always come back to something crazy and cartoony. Well, there's, you know, a place for both, I guess, and that's, you know, that's yeah, your, that's your yeah, thing. Yeah. It's you do well, keep doing it. <laughs> um, your, your style kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you're familiar with... Uh, Humberto Ramos. Oh know, yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, Spider Man. Um, he's you, one of my that's favorite. A great artists. compliments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I, I, you know, it's interesting that that's ringing true with me. Uh, all my favorite comic artists are the more um, cartoony guys, I guess. Like, um, so I forget his name. Who was the guy that did the first six or twelve issues of Walking Dead? Um, who might have also did the first whatever of Invincible. I'm sure, I can't remember the his name. The first guy who started with Invincible was uh, Corey Walker. Corey Walker was that it? Yeah, oh, man. yeah. I, I don't know. If he did, I, I don't know if he did Walking Dead, but I I know he started uh, Invincible. And yeah, he's great too. Because I I just know that like the first few issues of Walking Dead were like very different from the the very re- the rest of it because it's a different yeah. guy. Yeah, and they eventually turned into something. I mean, I I like the Walking Dead comics period, but. The, that start was just um, totally up my alley. Oh, Tony Moore, is that his name? Oh, Walking Dead. So I'm looking yeah, up. Yes, Corey Tony Walker Moore started with Invincible. Tony Moore did did Walking Dead. Right. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I thought he did both, but his <laughs> style also really uh, appeals to me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for some reason, it just that that he it, it was a very serious story, obviously, but he. Uh, yeah, but he has him, a more uh, cartoony style. I, I know what you mean. Yeah. He also did Fear Agent, didn't he? Yes. Yes, he did. That was amazing, too. No, yeah, yeah. there's definitely a cartoony vibe to his. Only it's a, it's a lot more more gritty. Yeah. I don't know if that's a... It's, it's a weird combination. <laughs> no, it works <laughs> it totally really well, works. though. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, so you, so you, 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 were, you channeled quite a few 
eclectic things, and I, I think yeah, that's, it's uh, just a weird weird mix going on. I, th- I always think that makes for the best kind of stuff, though, because uh, I don't know. I, I, I that's the, kind of the whole theme of the show is the stuff that influenced people and and where they went. So it's cool to hear that you had all these kind of different uh, influences, especially like the the European stuff, which I think is really you know as an American who didn't wasn't exposed to that stuff a lot. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, a lot of the European stuff, and especially over here in the Netherlands, um, mm-hmm. is based on like drawing stuff with the, the least amount of lines possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just keeping things very stylized and, yeah. and, and clean. And I always that always really appealed to me. So I, I yes. really like the, the superhero aesthetic of like Eric Larson. But then I, I kind of try to do that, but as like with as, li- as little lines as possible. Right. Clean is the is the word you said. Yeah, it. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's what I'm kind of attracted to in in comic art. Clean. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that that, that reflects. So, all right. So then, Captain Ultimate. You 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 were doing stuff, and you got how did it how did it come about? They just they just saw you in the anthology book. Yeah, and Joey just got in touch. Yeah, Joey and Ben had this had that idea for a while. Uh, yeah. I think they changed it up a little bit. Um, when we were talking with the, the three of us, but they they had the basic idea done already, and um, they just hit me up and and like, well, maybe we can work out some character designs and stuff and see how it how it goes and if it fits. And um, we just started started designing, and I think everything came around pretty quickly. I think the most time was was put into the the mustache of Captain Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> why what, why is that? Like just the making it iconic. Yeah, it was. The, it's kind of turned into the most important thing about his his whole yeah. look. I think we we did like four or five different designs for the outfit, and we we kind of decided on that pretty quickly. But I must have done like twenty or thirty different types <laughs> of mustache <laughs> before we decided on what what Joey called the Ron Swanson stash. I was just gonna say, <laughs> I bet Joey is a Parks and Rec fan, and that he wanted the Ron Swanson stash. That's why I didn't that you even know the show. I mean, it's. They air it here now, but they didn't at the time, so I had no right. idea. And he yeah, just said, that's... "I want to run Swanson Mustache." And I have to Google it, <laughs> and I've been hooked hooked on the show ever since. But I'm watch- I'm rewatching it right now. But that's that's so funny that you said that because I I could see exactly that being the uh, the approach. Yeah, if uh, they ever make a, a show or a movie, we <laughs> oh, you got to get Nick Offerman on there. Yeah, yeah. the casting will oh, be my... very simple. Yeah, because that would... Oh, my gosh. That'd be great casting. You uh, might, Ron, you might uh, have to hit the gym a bit, but he's, he would be perfect. Yes, definitely. Oh, my gosh. But, uh, so, yes, yeah, so that's cool. That, then you were... So, what is the process like? I guess a lot of comics are made this way, obviously, but, you know, communicating with them and uh, figuring out the art for for the stories and stuff like that, what, or at least the initial, like, approach, not necessarily, you know, each issue, but, like, did they just see what you did and were like, cool, do that, but for what we're doing? Or did they kind yeah, well, of they talk a, about the angle you're approaching? Yeah, they had a specific kind of feel. It's mostly sure. a feel uh, uh-huh. about the book, and they knew they were want to do it all ages and something that was appealing to kids. So they were looking for, you know, kind of more cartoony cartoony styles. Um, and they just, I mean, they saw the, the story I did for Rise, which was, was mostly in the same type of style as how I draw Captain Ultimate. Okay. Uh, so I just started with that, and and we worked on it a little bit, and um, no, that that all came about pretty pretty quickly. I mean, we so did, it didn't, you didn't need to tailor it too much to to something else. It was pretty much like this is like a, a perfect fit. Yeah, this is basically just me doing whatever I want to do, and that's the great thing about about the book. I'm pretty free in how I how I tackle these things, so that's that certainly keeps it a lot of fun for me. Yeah, well, and uh, so how how was the I, I forget the how the uh, release structure went initially because uh, I know you guys had some gaps. Yeah, but definitely. How, what, were, what was we, the uh, process like of like you know scripting and then you know them bringing that to you and figuring out what to do with that and how that all? Well, go? we had, we had a few gaps, but it was never because of the. I mean, our process is pretty slick. Uh, they they Joey and Ben talked to each other on um, uh, on Kickstarter. To just you know break down the the, the plot and then they both um, go their separate ways and start typing uh, pages and they can come up with the script pretty quickly. Um, I'm usually sleeping <laughs> because, of, because of the nine hour time difference. Yeah, sure. We never talk directly. It's always 
they work when I sleep and I work when they sleep. That's and funny. then every time I wake up, there's a there's a, like a page, a script page in my inbox. And when they wake up, there's art uh, in their yeah. inbox. So that's a really fun fun way to work. But it's a nice way yeah. to wake up every day. Yeah. Uh, but that goes that all goes pretty smoothly. It's just I think we started out on like a bi monthly schedule. Mm-hmm. And uh, the cool thing with Monkey Brain Comics is that they're really open um, to to just you know, let us decide for ourselves. There's, there's no pressure. I know you need to put something out every month. But it was just, uh, I think after three issues or four issues, um, just stuff kept getting, I mean, real life kept <laughs> getting in the way. Yeah. Uh, and it started with me and then with, with uh, Joey and Ben and uh, they were moving and it's just everything timing wise was really whack. So we had a big yeah. gap and um, and we noticed that in, in sales also because, I mean, especially in American books, over here we used to like waiting a year for the next issue. Right, uh, but in the states, you know, if you're if you're out of the 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 running for more than two months, you're off the pull list. Yeah. Um. So y- you need to have that that push. So we're, I mean, we did the first volume, six issues. Like we said, they're all done. We're working yeah. on the the Kickstarter now to get those in print. Um. And we want to when we come back after that with the second volume, uh, we want to be way more like bi monthly at the or uh, re- monthly or bi monthly. And no yeah. longer than that. So we're we're actually working on the new issues right now. Um, awesome. We've got issue seven and eight are already in the can, and I'm working on issue eight now. So we just want to get a bit of a head start, uh, so we won't run into the same problems. Because what it was mostly, you you always want to have a little bit of a buffer because of the crazy crazy schedule. Right. But that the monkey brain uh, deal went so quickly. I mean, I did those first five pages. Joey and Ben started to shop it around, but I mean our first. Our first uh, publisher of choice was Monkey Brain, so it was the first one who we approached, and they were they were into it almost immediately. So that went out way quicker <laughs> than any of us imagined. Yeah, uh, awesome. and they were just they were just putting together their second their second wave of books. Um, so it was like, yeah, no, we love it. Can you have it done next month? <laughs> we just basically been been pushing at it ever since so it's, it will be really nice for the second volume to have a bit of a buffer uh, so we won't run into the same uh, scheduling problems yeah uh, I wasn't familiar with Monkey Brain uh, before uh, Cats and Ultimate and stuff like that and why, what, what was the uh, drive to go to Monkey Brain are they known as a kind of I guess they're rel- you said their second wave of book, books they, uh, they're a relatively yeah. new yeah, they were publisher new. I think they were around for maybe a year when we when we approached them. Um, okay. But it's, I mean, they they started with Chris Roberson uh, when he left um, DC. Um, oh wow! I didn't I, realize that. Yeah, it was, I think he was writing Superman at the time and uh, I Zombie at Vertigo. Yeah. Uh, and I think he was basically. I mean, I'm I'm not going to talk for him, but I think he was kind <laughs> of fed up with the the editorial. Yeah, uh, I mean. That, that seems to be usually the case when someone goes off and does yeah, their own yeah, independent thing. Yeah, it's a well-known <laughs> story by now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, he was basically just fed up and like, well, I mean, I can do this myself and it'd be a lot friendlier place to work at. So yeah. they just started Monkey Run and just were like, well, how are we, how do we see comics going into the future? Um, so they, they push heavily on digitally, so it's a digital-only uh, publisher. Right. Um and they just started to approach some friends of theirs. So their first wave of comics, I think it was like four or five books, but they were all like crazy quality. Yeah. And the cool thing was that they were all all kinds of styles. So it's not just superhero books. I mean, right. they had some all ages stuff and uh, y- more European style books and more American style books. So they were really diverse. Um, so it's it's kind of the combination of. Um, the the high quality the diverseness the they're not afraid of all ages because that's that's something we we we've run into in America um, that, that most publishers yeah. aren't that that uh, eager to start to start all ages books right comics for kids are, are always seen as a risk uh, for some reason um, so it was a lot of reasons that they were on the um, on the top of our list and also accessibility I mean uh, I think if you look at kids now. I mean, my I have a little baby, and I I caught her swiping the iPad. Uh, uh. <laughs> she's like five months old, and she's already swiping. So oh no, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it's taking her over already. Yep, there it goes. Oh, <laughs> uh, I had a, uh, my my nephew when he was like four or five. He was swiping the TV. Like <laughs> oh my gosh, 
this isn't working. It's it's not working. <laughs> uh, so that I mean, kids are growing up with those with that yeah, stuff, right? Um, like I said, I think comic- it's smart for all ages stuff to be digital. You know, like yeah, definitely, because uh, comic books aren't always the most accessible place, especially for kids. No. Yeah, um, especially comic book stores specifically. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, kind, of, they're exactly. kind of exclusionary in some ways, you know, the people that are there and stuff like that. So Yeah, I mean, not all of them. There, there are some great stores out there. But, no, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, there's definitely some problems there. And, yeah. and digital is just, you know, they all have iPads. They're all playing games on it. Yeah. Um, so I, that that seemed like just like a smart smart move on our part. Um, so I've, I've, they, were, they were basically the first ones we approached, and they, they really liked it, so... There was a there was a good day for us. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And uh, it's interesting that um, this kind of wave of digital stuff is you know, like independent digital stuff is really catching on because uh, I, I think that's where it's going. I, I yeah, would they were definitely the at way. the forefront. Yeah, they were definitely at the forefront of that. I mean, that was before Comicsology Submit and uh, before yeah. Marvel and DC were really pushing their their digital stuff. So they they were kind of on the one of the first to really push push digital. So it was really cool to be a part of that. Yeah. Um, so and and what was the process like? What was the in the middle of the run of the first volume? How was the reception? You said you got a lot of heartwarming stuff when you were putting it out, but generally were you just you know putting it out and and hearing a lot back right away? Yeah. The, How did that go? The, yeah. There the, we got some great. Like I said, the coolest things was just. Um, letters from uh, from parents uh, saying you know how much they enjoy it together with their kids. We got a lot of pictures on Twitter from from kids reading the book, you know, kids with cool. iPads in their hands. Yeah, it was amazing. And um, no, I mean it was really well received. We got some great great reviews. Um, uh, got great responses from from fellow artists and fellow writers. Yeah. Um, so no, that was a, that was amazing. And I mean before the delay started hitting, we were doing pretty good. Um, Sales wise, um, so no, it's been the, it's been a great experience overall. Um, and now with the Kickstarter, again, we're getting so much love. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, no, and I think you guys uh, deserve it. I, I I get a feel of um, t- to bring up Bone again because I've just been re- rereading it lately. <laughs> but I get like a a because Bone is kind of I would say it's an all ages comic. You know, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, it gets a bit uh, creepy at times, but it's definitely sure. Right. But it's never too much. No, yeah, no, no. and it's like a, a a cross between Bone and Invincible and uh, just you know cool Silver Age, you know, or Golden Age even uh, comic stuff. So I think that's a, a really a winning combination. So I'm glad that it, it's it's doing well for you guys. Yeah, it's great, and I mean I've. The the inner fanboy in me is still squealing every time we get like a a retweet from re- guys like Rick Remender or um, yeah, Cena wow. Grace. That there's been some really awesome awesome people in the industry supporting the book. Well, you and have some, some cool people uh, uh, doing stuff for rewards, right? For the yeah, for the definitely we have some great ones, and we we actually added a few uh, a few extra um, artists today. Now we've been super fortunately. We have um, some great guys. I mean, the, the most prominent ones being, um, of course, uh, Ryan Stegman and Chris Sumney. Sem- yeah. Um, super fortunate to have them supporting the the book and donating some original artwork for the for the Kickstarter rewards. Uh, yeah. Chris Sumney is actually one of the first guy, one of the first pieces of fan art we received. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that was That's cool. That was amazing. I mean, at one point my my phone just started blowing up. <laughs> I was in a meeting. I was like, "Well, I can't. Oh, what the, what's happening?" So when I when I had time, I checked my phone. And it was just Joey and Ben freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> we got some art by Chris Sumney. That's um, awesome. So I mean, apparently he read the 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 first or the second issue and, <laughs> and liked it. So yeah. he used it as a as a warm up sketch. So that was that was insane. Yeah. So uh, basically, he thought, well, I mean, if he liked it enough to do that, maybe he'd be willing. To, to help out with the Kickstarter, and yeah. we reached out to him, and he said, "Yeah, and that's no, that's amazing." We've got, I mean, uh, Ryan Stegman, of course, from, uh, yeah. from Spider-Man, it's amazing. We got uh, Cena Grace uh, from Image Comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, we added some some Dutch artists uh, on there for the for the Dutch fans. Yeah. We've got um, Chris Evenhuis, who, um, I mean, in the states, he's doing Winona Earp at the at the moment oh. for IW uh, from the the TV series. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a fellow Dutchman. 
<laughs> yeah. uh, and we got Gerbe Valkema, who does a really cool newspaper strip over here in the Netherlands. So, uh, no, really excited with, with all the, the people who are helping us out. That's great. And like you said, you're, it seems like you're getting a lot of support from I, I keep seeing the stuff that Joey and retweets and stuff like that, and just from general comics people that, like, the main thing that I'm seeing is this is refreshing, which I imagine is very validating to you guys. Yeah, it's great, but, but it's also really weird that, I mean, we're a comic book who, that's also appealing to kids, and somehow that's, <laughs> that's, right. that's such a, a, a something that doesn't happen. I mean, if it's getting such a response just from people, ah, finally a cool All Ages book, please support it. And yeah. that's a really weird weird thing, especially for me, because, I mean, over here in the Netherlands, most comic books are for kids. Right. So, I'm usually defending it like, no, no, it's, I mean, comic books can be for adults too. That's usually the discussion I find myself in over here. Um, Right. But in the States, it's the other way around. Yeah. (laughs) They can be for kids too. (laughs) Yeah. It it happens. So, that's that's a weird discussion for me to be in, but, I mean, apparently it is. I mean, most books... And I'm noticing it now with my nieces and nephews. I mean, I really want to read read comic books with them, but it's hard to find stuff that's that's appealing. Yeah, it's uh, it's for, yeah, it's interesting. Like even the the movies kind of channel that as well. Like uh, Batman versus Superman. I don't know if you saw it or have an opinion on it or whatever, but was <laughs> something. Oh, I have you know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate it as much as everyone did, but I'm I don't know. I usually. Don't hate like I don't mind. I like the pre- Star Wars prequels, so I'm like that kind of person. Ooh. I'm like Joey. Yeah, yeah I mean, so, <laughs> so <laughs> like, like I don't, I, I don't really dislike a lot of stuff. You know, like I, it, it takes a lot for me to like really hate something. I don't, or, I don't or, hate the. I like Men sure. of Steel and this one. I don't hate the yeah. movies, and yeah. I think they're actually pretty cool science fiction movies. Yeah, it just it rubs me the wrong way. That no, I, I to- it, it does the same to me too. Yeah. Yeah, We've yeah. got a movie that features Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, and I can't take my kids to it. Right. That and that's that was my point is that even um I really I loved Civil War, but I uh, I worked at a movie theater. I, my last day was actually just a few days ago, <laughs> doing okay. this full time. <laughs> but I I used to work at a movie theater and uh, um uh Civil War like people would come out and be like uh, our kids are maybe too, a little too young for this. You know, yeah, it's because like they're seeing is... their favorite characters get beat up, you know. But I still love it. <laughs> yeah, and there's some pretty intense scenes in that movie, especially yes, towards yeah. the end. But for yes. the most part, I mean, I think I can show my my nephew at least the airport scenes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, that, that's just fun. hitting hard today. <laughs> yeah, but now the Marvel movies, most of them are are. I mean, it, it kind of depends on your kids, but most yeah, of them they do are better about balancing it. I think. Yeah. I mean, it's not you can't compare it to something like Man of Steel, which, which you totally can't take your kids to. No, yeah, yeah, but I, and I think that's uh, just a kind of a um, translation of what's happening in 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 comics in general in some way. Yeah, and I mean, I think that it's okay, but in comic books you always have like alternatives. I mean, if they're right. doing it right, I mean, you've got the the main Wonder Woman story, which was pretty um, pretty intense uh, for a while. But you had the Wonder Woman Adventures on the side, and the same with Superman and Superman Adventures. And when they're doing it right, they have like adult versions and versions that are appropriate for kids. Mm-hmm. It's just that the the adult versions have have kind of taken over. Yeah. Uh, and in cinema, you don't have that luxury. I mean, they can't. Warner Brothers isn't going to do like a kid friendly Superman movie and right. a movie. I mean, um, and it's just such a shame because the movies are such great great gateways to to right. comics. I mean, I yeah. can tell you how many times at conventions I have little kids at my booth who who, who only know this, the um, uh, the movies, and then right. they get into comics when they're when they're at the convention. It's like, whoa, they they have actually have comics of Thor. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> yeah, it's happening with uh, adults. My girlfriend, who just recently was super, she watched all the Marvel movies leading up to Civil yeah. War, and and just yesterday I gave her my uh, Marvel Unlimited. Login information so she can go through and read like you know the sixties Fantastic Four and Captain America and stuff like that. So yeah, the it's movies definitely are such, such amazing gateways also. Yeah. And so so I know it kind of rubs me the wrong way when you when you make them that hard to to access. right when they make it hard to enter through the gateway. Yeah. Yeah, and there are characters and things where I mean it's 
like Deadpool makes total sense to me that that's R-rated. Sure, sure, yeah. But I mean, Superman and Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. If if ever there was there were characters that that appealed to kids, it's Superman and Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman vs Superman rubbed me the wrong way in, in yeah in many ways, but but uh, that's okay. We 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 always have Guardians of the Galaxy to go to with our kids. <laughs> oh God, that's such a good movie. <laughs> um, but that that's a yeah. That, man, I didn't even think about that as a shining like example. I I actually. At the time when it came out, I'm like, this is going to be a lot of kids' Star Wars, you know, that it, like, shapes them like Star Wars yeah, does. Yeah, I can totally imagine that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, you were, t- we were talking about, like, you know, how the comics, the adult is kind of taking over. I, I think the industry is kind of swinging back from, like, many, many years of comic code uh, controlling, you know what I mean? Just, like, yeah. for a long time, they now. couldn't be that way. <laughs> And then, and then the '90s, I guess, or you know, mid '80s, kind of uh, breakout stuff that was a little darker, like Watchmen or or Dark Knight Returns or something like that. Yeah, no, of, uh, and especially after Dark Knight Returns. I mean, yeah. it's, Neil Adams Batman, even yeah, so it was even yeah. earlier. No, and a lot and, of those stories are really cool, but I think they had like a really weird effect on the industry as a whole. Right, right. Um, like, as some, all of a sudden, everybody tried to be Watchmen. Yes. Um, yeah. And the whole point of Watchmen was like to be an alternative version of. Yeah. So it right. it's kind of went. I mean, at one point, the the things they were like Batman and Superman and uh, the question, they all got more intense than Watchmen, which was supposed to be the intense version <laughs> of those characters. So right. that was pretty weird. But I think we're we're kind of at this beginning of swinging the other way around. Right. I think uh, so too. Again. So I mean, I'm really enjoying books. Uh, like Rocket Raccoon, like Squirrel Girl, um, yeah. uh, like I love Lumber that. Games. Is There's there a, a Howard of... the Duck series going on right now? Yeah, but is that yeah, still going? That's amazing. <laughs> okay, I need to read it because I love Howard the Duck. Yeah, no, that's but that's, I, I, I that's also it. so much fun. Yeah, uh, I mean, so there's definitely they're they're swinging the other way again, but they're still very uh, and those aren't like the really big sellers. Of course, so they're, yeah, they're very cur- very careful um, with it. So. Like they'll do a they'll do a all ages book if it has um an, like an existing Marvel or DC character, sure, of course, or they'll yeah. do it if it has a cartoon license. I mean, there's some yeah. amazing Cartoon Network books uh, being published at the moment. But then they yeah, have like the safety net of you know we already have an audience, uh, so we we can expect to sell at least this many books. So it's the the tough part comes when you're doing like original all ages stuff. Then the, for a lot of publishers, the risks are just too high. Yeah, because I, I had forgotten the, the licensing thing when it comes to all ages. You mentioned there are all ages comics being made, but they're all attached to. A license. Yeah, yeah, they're almost all they're all licensed or existing existing properties, um, which is what's what makes Captain Ultimate such a such a hard sell at publishers. Right. But I mean, on the other hand, if you look at uh, the reception we've had. Um, I mean, there's definitely an audience uh, for it. Of course, yeah. But yeah, yeah, there not being a lot of it on the market also means that, you know, people don't know it exists, and it's it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Uh, as long as you don't put those books out there and and really push those books. Um. So I mean, there just needs to be more of it, and then. But I think we're we're heading that way, so we're we're going in the right direction. Great. Well, so let let's do some. Um breakdown of the Kickstarter just so people can know what to you know what they why they should get into it so what <laughs> where they can find it on Kickstarter right should they search is there a URL you guys have that you're pimping uh, out yeah, or Kickstarter URLs are really long <laughs> that's what I mean there's no like there's no uh, custom URL for Kickstarter they always have them so weird but yeah I guess just really search awesome. Kickstarter for Captain Ultimate yeah if you search Captain Ultimate um, or even All Ages comic uh, it should definitely be up there I mean we're we're in all those Project we love and, and yeah, you guys were like featured on the yeah no we're like I said we're getting a lot stuff, of love right? even yeah. from Kickstarter itself um, yeah yeah so yeah no, we should be we should be easy to easy to find yeah um, what are some of the rewards we mentioned you get like you know you can do c- commissioned artwork or whatever from yeah we a lot got of some great really artists cool stuff. so I mean you can um, just get like the digital books um, but so far they've only been out through Comicsology and if you uh, do the digital books through Kickstarter you actually get the PDFs. So you'll actually own uh, awesome. the books. Uh, so that's, I think, for $15 or something. Mm-hmm. And then from $25 uh, and up, you get the, the physical book 
plus all kind of extras. So if you if you do the starting level, which I think is twenty five dollars, you get the book, you get some Kickstarter exclusive um, trading cards and a bookmark and stuff like that. And then from there on, um, it just gets cooler and cooler with with yeah. our book. We've got some really yeah. cool prints. Um, we've got prints by. Um, Ron Chen, who's the artist for Plants vs. Zombies, which is also a really cool All Ages book. Um, oh, I didn't realize they were doing a Plants vs. Zombies comic. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. You should totally check awesome. it out. Uh, I will, yeah. It's really cool. And Ron Chen did this really funny uh, print with uh, Ultima thing and the captain for uh, for our Kickstarter. It's really cool. Oh, cool. Um, we got prints by uh, Panda Musk, by uh, Eduard Rillot, who's a great uh, Dutch artist. Um, and then, I didn't realize yeah. Panda Musk was in on this, too. Yeah, yeah, he did a really cool... That's also actually a, a piece of fan art that we kind of recommissioned <laughs> for, uh, for a print. But he did this awesome piece uh, about Captain Altus. We, we absolutely loved it. He's uh, working so on we, something with Joey, right? Yeah, they're doing some really cool stuff. I, okay. I see some pages pop up now and then. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm not quite well, sure was... how far they are, but yeah. Sure, okay. He's a great artist. Um, yes, and, then, yes. and then we have um, some great uh, original artwork uh, that you can get. We've got... Um, Sean van Gorman, uh, who also does a lot of work with um, with Joey. Um, yeah, footprints. And- yeah, he's doing uh, rewards, of course. Like we said, we've got um, Ryan Stegman, uh, Chris Somney, Sina Grace, uh, Gerben Valkema, Chris Evenhuis, and we just uh, lowered all those rewards uh, levels. So I think it's at two hundred and fifty dollars uh, right now. So that's uh, that's a steal. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so totally get on that. Um, and we've got cool things like like cameo appearances. Uh, you can even be a recurring um, recurring character uh, in the comic book. Um, so yeah, no, just just go to the Kickstarter page and take a look. We've got some really cool really cool stuff on there for uh, for rewards. Yeah, I, th- I thought you guys did a good job with that, looking through them. So yeah, and that also comes from like the the amazing support that we're getting. We we got so many people who were helping us out. Uh, we got I didn't even mention we got Erica Schultz, um, who you can get a, a, a script review from. Uh, is one of the oh rewards. right yeah yeah that's cool. She's a great great comic book writer. I mean I really love M Free uh, the comics she writes. So no we've it's, we've been getting so many support from people, um, and that makes for a really cool reward package. So people yeah. should definitely go check that out. Yeah definitely. And so uh, beyond beyond Captain Ultimate, what's what else is going on with you? Do you have any other projects in the works? Anything exciting coming up? Uh, yeah, I'm working on it. As always is the case in comics, you're always working on a ton of projects. Sure. Yeah. Nobody's gonna see it until. <laughs> yeah. Years <laughs> later. For a long time. Yeah. Captain yeah. Ultimate was actually the fastest thing I've ever had. To, the, when <laughs> the, the, the print was pretty pretty insane. Uh, now we're still doing the the Captain Ultimate spin-off. Uh, little comic strips that are uh, published in the back of Savage Dragon. So, ah, I didn't er- realize that. Yeah, we're doing. We've done, I think, three so far. It kind of depends cool. on how many pages Eric Larson uh, draws, uh, how much room is left for us. Right. But that's amazing. I mean, I, I said I'm a huge fan of his. So yeah. That, that's basically. Um, there was I didn't realize you guys were doing that. That's that's yeah, really yeah. cool. Yeah, we're focusing on Ultimat, which which is basically our favorite character anyway. So. Yeah. We're having a lot of fun with uh, with those, uh, yeah. so that's still going on. We're still doing those, um, and I'm working on a, a web comic um, along with Mira Roloff and Lisanne Thermeshuizen, who are two really talented young uh, Dutch uh, artists, um, and that's shaping up to be really great. Uh, it's going to be um, more of a manga-like um, story because they're they're both heavily influenced by that. Uh, so we're working on that. And I'm putting together with a few local uh, artists uh, anthology book that we're going to publish um, in physical here in the Netherlands, but we're going to put the, the, translate the digital stuff and make that available for the states also, awesome. uh, which is always going to feature like us six Dutch creators, but we're teaming up for every issue with with other people. So I'm already working on a little story for it now with uh, Ryan Lindsay, the uh, Australian writer. Um, mm-hmm. Don't know if you know him, but he's done some really cool uh, yeah, comics for for Monkey Brain, for IDW, uh, for Dark Horse. He just finished a really cool comic, um, so that's great. And we're, we're reaching out to some other guys to make it a little bit more more international. Uh, so that should sure. turn out to be a really cool mix mix of styles, also. Um, so yeah, I think those are the only two things I'm allowed to 
<laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the nature of the nature of the game. Yeah, it's always so hard that you're working on stuff and you're so excited, yeah. but you can yeah. share. And I think for for writers, it's even worse because they're usually working on several projects at the same time. Yeah, and you can't talk about anything. That's just why yeah. you always get those infuriating <laughs> Twitter messages from. Oh, this is so cool, but I can't show you. Yeah, just the <laughs> vaguest tweets ever of just like, okay, yeah. I, like be excited, but I can't tell you why yet. Just please. And I hate reading those, but then I I catch myself sending them out myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and you you're like, cool. I'm glad you're doing something you like, but I I'll I'll, I'll stand by. I'll be patient for a while. Yeah. But, uh, it's the hardest cool. thing about comics. It's so much work uh, goes into it before anything actually sees the day. Yeah. Of, light of day yeah uh, but it's cool we're working on some really cool stuff so hopefully uh i'll be i'll have some cool stuff in the future yeah i'm glad things are sounds like things are going well for you guys so yeah I'm yeah it's, it's, it's going great i mean the, the captain ultimate is definitely giving me some some heartache <laughs> yeah this is really i've never had anything like this before i mean usually uh, um when stuff get, goes out there it's all everything's arranged and done so yeah. this is the first time that I have this this pressure. You got to hustle. <laughs> yeah, I got to hustle <laughs> really hard. Uh, but I mean, so far we we're doing great, so it's looking good. I'm really excited about it. So um, no, everything uh, everything's turning up great so far. Great. Well, I, I hope this this helps in some way, and hopefully we can alleviate the the second week. Yeah. No. Thank you so much for for yeah. helping us out. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. I, I'm, I'm I have a very small audience myself, but I I just love having conversations. Regardless, and uh, well, it's been of course I was familiar with you through Captain Ultimate, but I'm glad I learned more about uh, all your stuff, all your work, and stuff. I hope uh, I hope my horrible Dutch English was oh, somewhat don't, understandable. No, <laughs> it, don't worry about that. Like, <laughs> you're totally fine. Right? I uh, had a great conversation with Boy. It was kind of a uh, last minute thing and uh, I'm glad we got to do it because it ended up being a lot of fun so uh, again check out all that Captain Ultimate Kickstarter stuff and uh, you know, support them in any way you can it's a good book support uh, independent artists alright next week on the show uh, it's anyone's guess <laughs> as I mentioned earlier I've been kind of busy with things and I haven't been very diligent about uh, bothering people with emails so, um, there's a few things in the works, but, um, probably won't be happening by this weekend. So, I'm trying to find people, you know, I'll probably get someone on the show. I haven't missed a week yet. If I do, oh well, I'd rather not. I like to be consistent. Um, so if you want to keep up with the podcast or send me suggestions or things through that, these means, you, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, Facebook. Butterfly Effect Podcast, YouTube, Butterfly Effect Podcast, Twitter, Butterfly Pod. Me, I'm on Twitter at Edeltod, E-T-T-L-E-T-O-D-D. Uh, and you can email me, uh, tredelman at gmail.com, T-R-E-T-T-L-E-M-A-N at gmail.com. With all those things, whatever you got to say, say it. Podcast is on Spreaker and iTunes and all that shit. I keep saying shit like that. Because it's just, there's a lot of stuff, you know, it's just... Uh, complicates things but I'd appreciate it if you helped me out and checked any one of those things out and kept up with it you know alright I think it's time for me to go until next week see you later have a good one